How ADHD affects life expectancy, explained by Russell Barkley. ADHD is worse than any single other life expectancy risk factor that we are concerned about as a population. Diabetes, smoking, obesity, alcohol use, and so on. ADHD is worse than, than all of them. The good news is that most of these risk factors can be changed very simply. And that is by working with individuals with ADHD to alter these factors that are foreshadowing a shortened life expectancy if they don't change their lifestyle, behavior, and habits. After all, you, you can get more education, you can lose weight, you can improve your nutrition, you can increase your exercise, you can find ways to improve your sleep quality and duration. You can treat ADHD and reduce the risk of driving problems. We can also treat smoking and help people quit smoking or at least cut down on smoking and cut down on their alcohol use as well and improve their overall current health. So everything that we saw in our ADHD kids that's predisposing to a shorter lifespan, the vast majority of those things can be changed with help, if necessary, from primary health care providers and others who assist the population in this kind of risk reduction. So the good news is we can change all of this. We can help people lead a normal life, a normal life expectancy and a higher quality of life. But we also have to pay attention to the fact that if you look behind all of these first order lifestyle risk factors for shorter lifespan, the big factor is ADHD and especially its linkage with behavioral inhibition problems or what we often call conscientiousness, low conscientiousness is the personality trait linked here. So that means that we can't just focus on the life factors if we're going to help these people. We also need to lower this personality trait so that they are less likely to engage in these other factors. And that means we have to treat their ADHD in adulthood to help get this risk reduction. Clinicians don't realize this. They often focus on the specific lifestyle factor. They want to help you lose weight. They want to quit smoking, reduce your alcohol consumption, eat better, and so on. But what if the person continually fails? Clinicians don't know that the person who's likely to fail in these self-change programs is the young adult with ADHD and especially high levels of disinhibition. So they don't screen for it. And as a result, they're likely to blame the patient for lack of motivation or not willing to try to change their lifestyle.